Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Dwayne Haskins. What Haskins in Washington? We're gonna try to figure it out, dive into it. Here we go, welcome to the QB School. So Dwayne Haskins, what happened? We're gonna try to figure it out, watching one game, really some highlights, some lowlights, try to figure out exactly what they're thinking in Washington, making the quarterback switch. These videos are probably my least favorite to do. We will dive in and see maybe why, pull it apart, analyze it, and see exactly how that performance is going to potentially be changed with someone different. And so what that looks like, and realize at the end of the day, it probably all isn't on one player or one coach, but a collective effort going in the wrong direction, and can and will a quarterback change make any sort of difference. So let's dive into it. Here we go. What Haskins? All right, so the first one we're going to look at here is an empty third and six and taking a sack here. And this is absolutely on the quarterback. As far as he knows it's going to be a full slide, the offensive line communicates it's going to be a full slide, and then he's surprised that there's a free runner. And Baltimore definitely gets him here because not everybody comes. They kind of drop out of it. Right tackles blocking air or somebody's running free on the right. But you can see they're all communicating to the left. They're going to the left, full slide. You cannot hold on to the ball like that and just think you're going to make somebody miss like Lamar Jackson does you know, once a season. It just doesn't happen. You, you can't do that and be successful in the NFL on Sundays consistently. And so this is a pretty simple, they're trying to hide like the potential for a middle field closed here, but he's coming down from the heavens. They are blitzing. One, two, three. I think he drops out. Four, and then he's coming five. Well, what they're doing here essentially is all of the offensive linemen are going to gap to their left. So they have the, they can block everybody except this guy right here. This guy is on the quarterback. When he runs free, if they all blitz, not even if they all blitz, once they communicate all slide, he is the quarterbacks. So you must have a hot built in here. I don't care what it is. You know, th there's not a great hot throw here by any means. This kind of like little almost skip off in or slant here is probably the best thing, but you can't just hold the ball and take a sack. You just can't. And it's not like it's a, a miscommunication. They over-communicated. Again, where is the ball going to go on a hot down here? Potentially to the number three. You know, I, I don't love the stem and that kind of like chatter your feet thing, but it's there. You could do it. I don't, I don't think it would be the easiest thing in the world. I don't think there's a clean, easy hot there, but there is definitely not a reason to hold the ball and be startled again. Check them all out, pointing to the left. It's a full slide. They're going all the way out to 36. That's what they're pointing to. So again, this is not complicated, right? This is just math. One, two, three, four, five. Pointing this way, full slide. Here, 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 here. Now, one of these guys ends up dropping out here. So he ends up blocking nobody and we get a free runner. I'd love to see him, him meaning the right tackle, have that B gap secure and then spin out and basically gap hinge that thing. But again, that's asking a lot. That's not on the quarterback to be able to do that, but you'd love to be able to take the hit off this. But at the same time, like, I mean, help me help you. Like you can't do this. This is like a blitz pickup day one type of a hot from the line of scrimmage, defensive end, first third down of the game, first meaningful third down of the game. Does that, that's just not good enough. So for me, you know, there wasn't a great hot there either. I will say, you know, but at the same time, it, that's absolutely on Haskins. Then here, you know, just an opportunity for a little switch release, miss them down the sideline here. Nothing complicated about this. I think it frustrating again, pass pro wise to have a free runner on the quarterback. Again, this time, at least he gets the ball out of his hands, but scheme wise, this is not complicated. And this is frustrating for a quarterback second and 11. And what we're going to get down here is just a switch release by the one and the two down here to the bottom of the screen. So scheme-wise, we'll talk about he misses the throw. There's no doubt about it. We're going to get in here, and it's basically a rub. He's got the seam, and then we've got like a little mini wheel. And this is this is wide open in the NFL. you got to be able to hit this. But how they get here with a free runner on the quarterback, it's borderline, uh, you know, disrespectful to ask a quarterback to be able to make this type of throw with – what is essentially six blockers with only four rushers and a free guy? Like, how is that possible? You, nobody can play quarterback at a high level with that. But at the end of the day, he still should have hit the throw. 
So again, see the tight end? He's in the block. There's six guys blocking. They're only rushing four. I, I have no idea what the left tackle is doing. Like the left guard is going to pick this up. I don't even need to know. I don't have to be a math savant to do this one. Okay, we've got six. We've got six. I mean, not not difficult. We're, we're going here. We're going here. And we're going here. And that's probably not the matchup we want all the time. But that, it's six on six. There's what? The, no, not acceptable. Like, I'd be coming out of my skin if I was playing quarterback and this was happening. Rushing four. Six protectors. Free rusher. Get out of here. Again, I still like what he does footwork-wise here. Look at it. He kind of dovetails, bails away, puts his foot in the ground and throws it, gives it a chance. Love for him to hook that up. If he hooks that up, that's a big-time play, and he's still probably playing this Sunday. So just a little bit, you know, a combination, right? Like terrible pass pro, terrible uh, kind of conceptual pass pickup, being able to have that many free runners. And again, this is not just a one-off thing. This was damn near every important down in the first half. So again, they get hit with what is essentially zero. Now, I personally think that their crosser down here to the slot, he could throw this ball. Now, this is playing quarterback in the league. You're going to get smacked. There are, again, pass pro issues. We're getting broken down. They're talking to themselves. They're confused. We'll talk about it. We'll watch it again here. But there's six and a chip here. They're not rushing more than six, and we're still getting hit. We can't get the ball off. I still think that he could throw this crosser. So again, without being in the room, knowing exactly what the read is, hard for me to say for sure a thousand percent the ball should go to the crosser. I'm going to guess though, I put a lot of money on this being the first read coming across and being able to get that ball out. One, two, three, four, five, put your foot in the ground and lead him out here. Almost zero anticipation throws show up in this film. So again, well, I'll pause it at the back end. One, two, three, four, five, right there, throw it. You got to lead him. Right on the 45. I mean, it's there. I think of like Philip Rivers for the last 15 years making this type of throw. One, two, three, four, five. You're going to get blasted. Anticipate it. Throw it out there with a seven iron. Now, should he have more time to throw? Absolutely. Scheme wise, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, this is a little bit muddled because I think all we get out of the tight end is a chip. So he ends up chipping here and then releasing. Okay, so really it's six. Pretty sure one of these guys drops out. I think it's the guy with his hand on his ground right here. The back comes across. And to me, so when the back's coming across full slide, that means we need to be sliding out. So it needs to be here, 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 this guy drops, and then we're here and here. So they could have lucked into this. Now, I think what happens is the chip kind of jacks the whole protection. So again, watch the chip from the tight end basically takes, lets that guy run free. So again, I can't tell you who's at fault here, but I can tell you that that is not sound protection at any level, let alone Sundays. I mean, you can't just chip a guy and have him run free. So to me, it looks like the right guard should keep working to 99, but that's just me guessing. The center and left guard need to keep working. But if 53 were to blitz, they would be in trouble. Again, unsound. Combination of not being able to get the ball out on time and unsound pass pro. Not a recipe to play quarterback at a high level. First and 10. This to me is like a little over with a dagger. And again, this kind of epitomizes some of the issues for me watching Haskins through this game. There were opportunities down the field. Okay, this is pretty good pass pro. Nobody around him got all sorts of time, good base there, and he just skunks this thing. And really, I think he skunks it on two different levels. I think he could hit the over if he wanted to. And again, without being in the room, nobody knows how they're asking him to read this. But I will say that most times, and this is just... Most times when you run what I'm going to consider this being more of an over, 
with an in route, with a check flat, you're going to read this one, two, three. Now, I don't love this play with an over because there's nothing to hold these guys on the backside. We'll talk about later. But right here, this is open right here. This is wide open, must throw. If for some reason, I'm used to playing this more like a dagger where it's a clear and then we're trying to get this in behind it. Just think it's a more sound play with a high low with the check to the back. But if you want to run this over in, well then it looks like he goes one, two, three to the check flat and then he's late and the ball skies on him. So we'll watch it a handful of times. But to me, this ball needs to go to the over right on the end. I mean, that's wide open. He's looking right at it, right down the middle of the field. Nobody around him, you know, eight yard circumference, radius, whatever it's called. And he sky mails a check down again. If for some reason he didn't like the over, so let's say no to the over, probably doesn't like the in because the in only comes open because the guys are rallying to the check down there. But again, he should be able to flip his hips and make that throw to the check down as well. From the back end, I think it's even more glaring about the over. And I'm just a little confused. It looks like he's struggling as far as where to go. Like, watch his head here to me. His head's all over the place as far as in, over, in, over, flat. All, uh, uh, it looks like in, over, in, flat. And that's a recipe for a disaster. That's, he's looking at the over. That over is wide open. Throw it right off 48 ear, 48's ear. I mean, 48's not covering anything. He's already off of him. I mean, he's looking at him right there. You got to be able to settle him at the bottom of the end, throw it right by him. And then, oh man. So, not a great start by any means. Halftime, you dig the channel, you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate it. In addition, if you haven't checked it out, check out the QB School tool. The link is in the description. It's free, it's easy, it's addictive. Have fun with it. I appreciate it. Let's keep the video going. Now, next up, little three by one. Again, and on this slant, so this kind of like what is normally considered like an all slant, which is really just a one step slant and a three step slant. I'll play it here once. The accuracy here, it's just never going to get better than this. Middle field closed man, you're going to get outside leverage with the divider. And this, this should be a handoff for an NFL quarterback. A slant to a slot. And I think his feet let him down. Accuracy lets him down. Fortunate not to be a pick there. Again, what I mean by that with divider element, middle field closed, man, and we're running triple slant. Just about every team in the program in the world has some variation of this. Quick slant, a little bit deeper slant, and then usually an in out here. And you read this saying one, two, three. Well, when we get middle field closed and we are running in breaking routes, most times teams will line up outside because why? They have help on the inside wherever their divider rules are, telling them to be inside or outside. Well, to a slot, normally you're going to be outside leverage in man coverage because you have help in the middle. So this is the perfect combination. Perfect call. Must be able to hook up at any level of football. Freshman football, JV football, flag football. We can do this. It's behind him. It's all bad. Now, to me, it happens because of the footwork. So footwork-wise here, this should be a one-step and throw. One, and see that little extra unnecessary? Boop. Too much. Get a little bare front. Unnecessary footwork fails him here. The little hop, skip back. Jacked up his timing. He's late. It's behind him. It's all bad. So... And the thing about it was, I, you know, there's definitely an element of this is on Haskins, but there were some good moments too. And this is one of them. Drives the ball down the field a few plays in this game. This is a nice throw. He can make these overthrows. Again, split flow action from the backfield, as popular as it ever gets. Left guard just getting destroyed. We'll talk about on when we watch it again. But this is just a simple over with a nice split flow action from the backfield. This is how it should be. He should be able, we should be crafting opportunities for him to be able to do this type of throw. You know, I think like Josh Allen, overs all day. See it, throw it, not a whole lot of anticipation. These guys get into the fake and there's just huge void here. So just nice, easy, simple things. He doesn't need to do full field reads. 
It's wide open. Look when he lets it get perfect. Beautiful. I will say that scheme wise here for me, you know, I don't love, and I, this is why I, I'm not necessarily a hop, a Haskins apologist, but this is to me is three cloud. I don't know what the coverage is as far as like who necessarily who's who in the zoo here, but we've got a third player, a third player, a third player, a rolled up cloud corner. When we run this over here, this guy should be out of here. Meaning this guy, this guy should not be a factor on an over. Right here, he runs what I'm used to calling like a burst seven or circus. Well, he needs to run this like he's going to run to go gather that third defender. He can't run it like it's a quick out because then this guy can fall off into the over. So again, this is combination. It's not just a quarterback play. It's scheme. It's pass pro. It's the concepts drawn up. Again, watch that seven, how shallow it is, and it allows that third player to come off to the over. Like, he thinks he's going to get the ball there running that? Like, how can that be the right route? It can't be the right route. That ne that guy needs to come out at a way steeper angle to hold that third player so that this guy doesn't get decapitated on the over. So, again, this to me, you know, it's easy to just replace the quarterback. It's a lot harder to get a lot better design consistently and have everybody on the perimeter do what they're supposed to do at a really high level. Now, you, you want to play quarterback? with the NFL offensive line, watch the left guard. Has anyone ever seen split flow action get blown up by, you know, essentially the nose on a pass rush? I've never seen that before. I mean, that doesn't look like it feels good and it hurts my eyes too. I'm ne I honestly never seen this. <laughs> good luck. Glad you got that one off. So the next one is a third and two. This is going to be motion or shift across two by two. We're going to get a shallow from up top and an over from down here in the slot. And that over is wide open. We don't pull the trigger. Instead, we throw a contested shallow. They make a nice play. You know, not a lot of space there to convert this thing. But the over is wide open. Again, you've got to be able to get through a read, go one to two. You don't have to go one to two to three to four all the way across the field. But this is, this is pretty simple. You know, I'm not, I don't want to be a jerk about it, but this is about as simple as you can get as far as runaways versus man. We're going to have somebody low, somebody high, shallow. If someone's running with them, don't throw it to them. This over is wide open. I mean, it's, it's wide open. This is the type of stuff that when you don't see it or you don't throw it or you don't hook it up, you just can't. This is a decision making, a processing thing. You can't look at that shallow and go, yeah, I really like that, and not see the wide open over behind it. Now, maybe they're in the in the quarterback room saying, we're calling this for the shallow, must throw the shallow. I just doubt it. It's a great rate. That's a great route on the over. Could have easily laid that thing out there. Got a chance to score if you put it on him. Again, watch it from the back end here. This is nice protection. This is well protected. I mean, there's nobody around him. You know, to me, he's not necessarily even like lined up, unnecessarily lined up, not lined up. You know, it's not like it's a bad throw. It's just good coverage. It's good tight coverage as opposed to the over on top of it that's separating right there. That's wide open, running away from him. So, all right, you know, maybe you're he's locked on guys. And I, and I get it. That can be frustrating for coaching staff too. But this one, for me, 4th and 13, this was probably the one that I've heard the most amount of hate on, you know, he basically, for lack of a better word, checks it down on a fourth and goal, fourth and 13 here. And I, this is absolutely frustrating, but just speaking on the quarterback's behalf, where's he supposed to throw it? There's nobody open. They only have of the five eligibles, only two are in the end zone and they're running like a scissors route that neither of them are really open. Maybe, maybe you could crazy anticipate a corner and throw it on the dot here. Like that would, this is the only throw in the world that potentially gets open, but there's still like five guys around it. So I don't, I don't know how you, what, what they're supposed to do. I think they run like straight up scissors here with this run like a little fat thing back here, a little curl and a check down. So you can't throw this. You can't throw this. You can't throw this. You know, what, what are you supposed to do? So I get it. Nobody likes to see a check down on fourth and goal from the 13, but where are you supposed to throw the ball? There's five guys over two up top. 
Again, a miracle throw on the dot on the period, maybe. Establish that. By the way, it should say establish 2020. Don't get me started. But I mean, come on. You're going to hate on him for throwing to the wide open arrow whip thing as opposed to just a jump ball? All right, maybe. I, I honestly could see the argument to say, hey, have some football IQ, must throw it in the end zone. Maybe they talked about it in the headset, but do them a favor too and call, get four guys in the end zone. Call four verts. Call something where people are running in the end zone. Not three out of the five not running in the end zone. And then the last one here, you know, to me, besides for being an illegal formation, with two guys on the line of scrimmage there with the three and the two, this is a great throw. I mean, he's battling there. I'm getting messages. He's battling. Puts his foot in the ground and drops a dime here on the inside fade. That's just what, like, this is not, not necessarily the best of him, but, like, he, I think, does have special arm talent. I think he can make throws like this consistently. I think that asking him to, like, be hot and see all these pass pro things and get things out on time is not his strength. So play to his strength. Create opportunities to throw it down the field on the perimeter to get balls out that he can see and drive that aren't necessarily you know over the middle of the field. Just work the outside the numbers. He can do that. He can make those throws outside the numbers. Don't have it all be kind of processed things from the pocket. So frustrating. So Dwayne Haskins obviously uh, not playing at a high enough level. Uh, I think that there were a number of concerning things for me. The combination of the protection issues with hot identification with getting the ball out of your hands and then really some football IQ things that I think really let the team, the organization down. And so I can see why a switch would be made. I'm not sure I necessarily totally agree with it. I do think that he is a very talented young player that I think has the opportunity to be really good in this league. We'll see how they kind of deal with this situation moving forward. But thank you so much for hanging to the end. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.